Hi everyone and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. So today I wanted to answer another question from the supporters of Leah Remini Facebook group. The question is, what is the difference between a Scientology org and a Scientology mission? So a Scientology org, the word org is short for organization. And when you hear former Scientologists talking about where they were on staff or how they got into Scientology, sometimes you'll hear them talk about orgs and sometimes you'll hear them talk about missions. And mission is a bit of a loaded word because it has um, a specific definition in other religions, you know, like Christians going off and doing mission, or you hear Mormons going off and doing mission and things like this. And it's loaded for a reason. That is the reason why Hubbard decided to use that word for a mission, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The difference between a Scientology org and a Scientology mission is the services, the Scientology services that they are allowed to deliver to paying public. When you hear somebody refer to an org, they're normally referring to what in Scientology is called a class five organization. And these are considered your main line city level Scientology organizations where brand new people are supposed to come into Scientology. So I was originally from the Philadelphia org and that is a class five organization. The class five designation is important here because that specifically has to do with what separates it from a mission. So a class five org is called a class five org because it is allowed to train auditors up to the level of class five. Now in Scientology, there are different classes of auditors. It goes from class zero up to class 12, a uh, class five and it goes from class zero up to class 12. You can only train up to class eight as a public Scientologist, anything beyond that. And you have to be a member of Scientology C organization. And so, and so for the auditor levels, you have class five, and then right above class five, you have what in Scientology is called class five graduate. And uh, nobody really cares about all this, but I'm here to explain it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, class five graduate is a separate level of auditor training where you learn how to deliver all of the correction or repair actions that could potentially be needed in an auditing session from class five on down. So you can become a class five auditor but then if a class five auditor is in session with somebody and something goes wrong, they have to bring in a class five graduate auditor to fix whatever happened. So a class five organization can train auditors up to the level of class five graduate. A Scientology mission cannot train any professional auditors. That is the main difference. Also, anybody can start a mission. A mission is not owned by the Church of Scientology. A Scientology mission is owned by, uh, in Scientology, what they call a mission holder. So any Scientologist can pay the Church of Scientology about $30,000. It might have been up to 50,000 now, but I'm gonna stick with the 30,000 number. Basically, you pay 30 grand for what's called a mission starter package or a mission starter kit. And it gets you all your basic materials that you need. And you're basically buying the licensing agreement to open up a Scientology mission and sell Scientology auditing and deliver introductory Scientology courses. So introductory courses are the ones that usually cost 50 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks. And they can deliver a very few major services, a very few. And, and it's not even important to get into what they're called right now because nobody cares. But they cannot deliver any professional auditor courses. They can, however, deliver professional auditing. So somebody can go just as high on Scientology's bridge at a mission on the auditing side as they can at an org. But if somebody wants to do professional auditor training, they absolutely have to go to an org. And as I mentioned, missions are privately owned and churches of Scientology or class five organizations are not. One other major difference is that whoever is the mission holder or the executive director of a mission, a mission holder usually hires someone to be their executive director. They have complete control over the schedule of that mission. Whereas a class five org or a normal mainline church of Scientology, they all have the same schedule as mandated by continental and middle and international management. The mission network in Scientology used to be huge. People used to be getting into Scientology at missions by the hundreds and the thousands. That is simply not true anymore today. Missions have become largely irrelevant. Missions, especially in the United States, have largely disappeared. They're actually doing quite well in Russia for some reason, but in the United States, not so much. I mean, I live here in Clearwater, Florida. You would think that in Clearwater, 
there would be missions everywhere. There is one mission down in Bel Air. There used to be a mission right here in Clearwater. It closed down. It didn't have any public. Um, it didn't have any public. And one of the reasons for that is you have a massive church of Scientology here in Clearwater, Florida called the Flag Service Organization. But still, every church of Scientology is supposed to have 10 missions around it. And the missions are supposed to serve as feeder lines into the main class five organization. I can tell you without any shadow of a doubt, there is not a single church of Scientology in the entire world, except maybe for Moscow, Russia and St. Petersburg, Russia, that has 10 missions around it. Most orgs have no missions around it. The Philadelphia org where I was originally on staff and where I got into Scientology or my mom got into Scientology when I was little, um, had zero missions around it. And the, and the Church of Scientology in Philadelphia is the only Church of Scientology in all of Pennsylvania, in all of New Jersey, and literally it was the only Church of Scientology or mission of Scientology that existed in that entire area. When Scientology puts out figures for how many churches, missions, and groups it has, you'll notice it never breaks down how many of those are churches, how many of those are missions, and how many of those are groups, because they're largely imaginary entities. A mission can be just something that exists legally on paper, but the mission holder uh, has hours like Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and literally there's nobody on services at the mission. Like <laughs> there are plenty of missions that are on the books that the Church of Scientology counts as missions that literally in the real world don't exist. They exist on paper. Maybe they exist on a Facebook page, but they're not actually active. Truly, missions have become largely irrelevant in the world of Scientology these days. As far as the sizes of these organizations, um, a mission would be lucky to have five staff. I mean, that, that would be a successful mission. That would be a going concern. Uh, the mission here in Bel Air, um, now Bel Air is basically just a town just south of Clearwater. I mean, it's practically Clearwater. And it's owned by a, a wealthy, well-known Scientologist. And that's one of the reasons it has been able to be successful is this person has kind of a little ecosystem that exists around her. And it's kind of a popular place to be on course or get auditing because you're basically doing the same services that you could do here at Flag in Clearwater, but in a lower pressure environment. In fact, that's one of the draws why somebody would be on services at a mission instead of an org, much lower pressure, much le uh, less pressure to be on course for a bunch of hours a week, less pressure to make donations for various things. You're not really harassed about changing your schedule around and things like that. It's just um, a much lighter, more flexible environment. So I was saying a mission would be lucky to have five staff. This Bel Air mission might have as many as 30 staff to 50 staff. It's kind of um, one of the more successful missions in the United States. But again, five staff would be like a good mission. And I'd be shocked if John Travolta's mission in Ocala even had five full staff, full-time staff. Uh, whereas a mainline um, class five org should have 30 to 50 staff to be doing kind of well. A hundred full-time staff members at a class five org is practically unheard of these days. I doubt there's more than four or five orgs in the entire United States that have a hundred full-time staff. And I guarantee you that is not a number that will remain constant. If continental management is under pressure to sort of beef up the statistics of a particular org, usually because they just got a brand new renovated building or something and management just sunk a bunch of money into the building. So continental management is under a lot of pressure to make it look like that org is doing well. You will have a whole bunch of management teams descend on the organization and in a very frantic, urgent effort, juice up the revenue numbers, juice up the recruitment numbers, maybe get it up to 100 staff. And then once those management teams go back home, all those, uh, you know, 70, 80% of those staff just disappear. So I'm just trying to give some relative uh, relative numbers, staff numbers that you might expect at an org versus a mission. An org, you're going to be generally talking 30, 35, 40 staff. A mission, you're talking anywhere from zero to three to four staff. So this question about what is the difference between an org and a mission is very closely related to another question that comes up a lot in the supporters of Leah Remini group, which is what is an ideal organization 
In Scientology, this word ideal org is a real hot topic, a hot buzzword right now. And I'll just give a quick explanation for this and, and maybe I'll break it out later on in, in a separate video. Back in the day, Hubbard wrote a policy called the ideal organization. And in that policy, it basically said, an org doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be fancy or gaudy. It needs to be clean and professional and it has to have a very friendly and you know neatly dressed staff. There was, uh, the, the, the point of that policy letter actually emphasized, we don't really care that much about the materialistic aspect or the, uh, the visual beauty or niceness of an org. It just does need to be clean and neat but that the people are the most important part of an organization. Well, about 15 years ago, David Miscavige came up with this new brilliant strategy, quote unquote, um, and it basically ended up being uh, this ideal org strategy set into motion what is essentially uh, turning the Church of Scientology into a, a real estate organization and, and essentially a real estate scam. Uh, in present time, this term ideal organization is when an existing Church of Scientology purchases and renovates a new building to be located in. Uh, current requirements, I believe, are no less than 50,000 square feet. Some of these orgs were in buildings that just uh, needed to be renovated, but that time has long since passed. Uh, these days, a, a new building has to be purchased for an existing organization. Detroit, Michigan is a perfect example, by the way. The Detroit org has been around for decades and decades, forever. And yet, what the Church of Scientology did was buy and renovate a huge new building. Um, it's not a new building, but they bought a building and renovated it. A huge new premises for the Detroit org. And then they move into that building, which is 10 or 15 times more than they could ever put to good use. And then the Church of Scientology puts out a press release saying they have opened a new Church of Scientology. Over the last 20 years, there has been a net decrease of Churches of Scientology in the world. Anytime the Church of Scientology puts out a press release saying they've opened up a new organization, it's total bullshit. So, but that is what this ideal org, that's what ideal org means. It means you have an existing Church of Scientology. They buy a new building for millions and millions of dollars. They renovate it for millions and millions more dollars. And then they move into that building and they pull the ribbon and they do a grand opening and ta-da, that's now an ideal org. Um, there are some other things that most people aren't gonna care about, but like if you walk into an ideal org, right past reception, there's gonna be a huge digital display of these, these wall panels. There's, it, it's, it, it's just a display, these panels, and they've got these little audio video things going in them, and they have these videos that play on loops that describe different aspects of Scientology. And that was David Miscavige's brilliant idea when he decided there weren't enough people in Scientology on staff who were good at explaining to new people what Scientology was all about. I'm not, I'm not kidding. He literally said this. I was still on staff working for the church when all this happened. He said, um, see, Division 6 is the part of the Scientology um, organizing board that's responsible for bringing in new people into Scientology and getting them started on introductory courses. And people who work in that um, division are called Div 6 staff. He said, we don't have enough good Div 6 staff. We don't have enough good Div 6 regs, uh, registrar is someone who signs somebody up for courses. We don't have enough good Div 6 staff and Div 6 regs to bring new people in and enlighten them on Scientology and start them on, um, new, on, on intro courses. So we're going to bypass that whole problem and we're going to create this audio visual system to take care of that. So if you walk into a church of Scientology and you start asking questions, they're not going to answer your questions. They are specifically instructed not to. They are instructed to guide you over this audio visual display and just have you sit down and watch all of these videos at your own leisure and at your own pace. And someone will come in and check on you and see how you're doing. You have any questions. And what they are trained to do is to know which video uh, is going to answer your whichever question you happen to have. But they're just going to keep directing you to different videos. It's the same videos you can find on Church of Scientology's YouTube channel. It's the same videos you can find if you stumble upon uh, Scientology's direct TV channel. Uh, but anyway, this was part of Miscavige's grand plan for how Scientology was going to start expanding again. It didn't work, uh, but it did create a lot of busy work for the people at International Management to create all of these displays. The whole ideal organization program became another avenue for intense fundraising 
to occur in Scientology. Tens and tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars have been raised over the last 15 years to buy and renovate these new buildings. Uh, all the money, like let's take the Philadelphia Org, for example. All of the money that is raised to buy the new Philadelphia Org building comes from the Scientologists in Philadelphia. One of the things that motivates those Scientologists to pony up that cash is that they believe once this building is purchased that it you know belongs to the church of scientology of philadelphia they think that by buying this huge building they're helping the church of scientology of philadelphia what most of them don't know is that that's not true that building's ownership is transferred to the church of scientology international and even though it's owned outright with no without a note the church of scientology of philadelphia is still paying monthly rent to the Church of Scientology International to occupy this building that was just purchased using the funds of the Scientologists in Philadelphia. And realize that when I say Scientologists in Philadelphia, I'm including the staff members. The staff members are ponying up this cash as well to help buy this building. And then they find out once it's fully purchased that, oh, they still have a monthly rent payment to the Church of Scientology International. And not only that, the Church of Scientology of Philadelphia is still responsible for now making the, the, uh, the utility payments on this huge, massive building that they did not need. The Church of Scientology of Philadelphia is currently occupying a small little building at 1315 Ray Street that it's been in for decades. And it also purchased, like over 10 years ago, it purchased, using funds from parishioners, a skyscraper about half a mile away. I think it's on Chestnut Street. It's either on Chestnut or Walnut. I think it's on Chestnut. That has sat there, vacant, unoccupied, unutilized for over 10 years. And the reason they have never moved into this building is because they were able to squeeze enough blood from the stone, <laughs> squeeze enough money out of their, their public to buy the building. And ever since then, they have not been able to raise enough money to renovate the building. And this is just one of these weird things that ends up happening when you take this small organization, the Philadelphia Org, and you insist that it buy a 50,000 plus square foot property. It doesn't even occupy the 6,000 square foot property it has now, right? You insist it buy a 50,000 square foot building. And then what? And then what? Miscavige came up with this brilliant idea, um, I say sarcastically, that the reason more people weren't coming into Scientology is because the premises weren't nice enough. I mean, it's the dumbest thing in the world because there was a period in Scientology's history where it was expanding in the 60s and the 70s. And I guarantee you, the missions and the orgs were no prettier back in the 60s and the 70s uh, than they are today. I mean, aside from these newly renovated ideal org buildings. But you see, Miscavige can't bring himself to isolate the real reason why Scientology isn't expanding, which has to do with its terrible public relations, its abuse of the staff, abuse of the public, abuse of Sea Org members, um, a real toxic policy of enforcing familial disconnection. Uh, he's not, he can't bring himself to isolate the real reasons why Scientology is failing. So he seizes upon these bullshit reasons like the buildings aren't pretty enough. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've said everything I wanted to say on um, what is the difference between an organ and a mission and what is an ideal org. Uh, as usual, when I finish these videos, I usually think of many things I wanted to say and didn't. But I'm going to leave it there for right now. So that's all I've got. I hope this has been helpful in some way. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!